cheers what up welcome to the paintbrush social club i am your host sean d skellington for the next three weeks nine artists are going to go head to head each episode in two challenges winners go to our final episode it is there that they will compete for a cold hard cash prize a prize package from waco rage room their art featured here at skellington curiosities and most importantly to claim the title of king or queen of the paintbrush social club our artists are just now arriving let's go meet them up first he's a tattoo artist and graffiti legend the one and only scuba belly our style is a little bit of everything i guess usually i do everything in my underwear so whatever slaps on canvas slaps on canvas he has got one of the slickest mustaches in the game character concept artist and illustrator oscar fernandez uh, my personal art style is more of a hmm, 2D sort of surrealist thing. Lots of monsters, boobies, things like that. There are fairies and hippies and psychedelic colors. You know she's involved in some way, shape, or form. Tattoo and surreal artist, Ali Menchaca. Um, for one, lots of color. Um, maybe some jokes, some bad dance moves. We all know that art is one of the most subjective things on the planet. That's why each week I'm bringing in three new guest judges, all from diverse backgrounds, ready to critique the crap out of your work. Up first, he is the social media director from Fox 44, Matt Savage McGovern. Hurry up. <laughs> Okay, we still rolling? I don't know what to expect, but I do expect to be blown away. He owns Hype Waco, Ryan Serrano. So we'll see how myself and the other two judges uh, determine the winner. He owns Gotti's Oddities, and when he's not making art out of human or animal remains, he also provides casket transportation services. Mr. John Gotti. Uh, I'm looking for creativity and how, uh, how well they stay on point for what they're told to do. Which brings us to their first sketch challenge. Today, artists, you will have to design a marketable logo for Gotti's Oddities based off of the hearse that he pulled up in. Our judges will be judging on creativity and marketability. Bust out those cameras, take some reference photos, and head inside to the shop. Guys, shut up and focus. When he talks, like his voice is booming, so it kind of like startles you a little bit. You have 30 minutes to design a marketable logo. Don't worry about what your opponents are doing, because time will kick your ass in this competition. Don't turn in unfinished stuff. Your time kicks off now. <laughs> Thoughts on the sketch challenge, uh, I'm actually excited for it. That's what I do all day, every day, is just doodle up a bunch of things. And I really don't have a lot of time between work, dad stuff, so I'm pretty quick. I don't really use any pencil, I just go straight ink. So that's probably the one thing I am looking forward to. Oh man, hey look, this sketch is a pain in the rear quarter. I've never done car art, car vehicles. Have you seen my tires, dude? Like, I couldn't draw a perfect circle to save my hindquarters, I guess you can say. Can we say eh? Hey, can we say eh? Uh, 
Um, I... I've never drawn a car before, I feel like. Some of you guys are struggling. You're at the halfway point. Let's go. So when we started the sketch challenge, I was pretty nervous because I hate doing vehicles, cars, even like spaceships where you have like imagination freedom. I don't like it. There's a lot of symmetry, a lot of angles, and I like more organic things. So I was pretty nervous about it. But once I got in the zone and did it, music blasting, it was it was pretty fun. They are doing really good to watch them come alive. It's, uh, it's interesting, it's fun to watch. That there looks like the pressure's up. I saw some of the two of the artists switch angles and start over. You know, with like 10, 15 minutes. So I'm kind of nervous about that. But. It's so much planned in such a little bit of time, and um, I tried my best to like get the point across. But overall, it worked out. 30 minutes, believe it or not, you can do a whole lot of nothing in 30 minutes. And it looks like Scuba Belly had to start over more than one time, but I mean, this guy is totally capable of performing miracles, so let's see what he's got. I'm totally confident in him. Yo, you have five minutes left. They're, they're working really hard at this sketch challenge, trying to complete it and finish everything up. Man, my opponents went in with straight confidence. I said, dude, am I the only one with a puckered butthole around here? Time's up, drop him. It's over, dead, dead ski. Let's judge it. All right. You've had 30 minutes to design a marketable logo for Gotti's Oddities based off of his hearse. Scuba Valley, you're up first. Tell me about this sketch. Uh, well, it's a ghost hearse. You know, I was thinking of something like maybe that you can market, something that's gonna go quick on a t-shirt. Something simple, yet they get the point across. You know, there's one foot in the grave toe and co, you know. You can even put the toe and co with a toe tag or something. I got ideas up here. But that time frame really killed me, man. So, uh, but yeah, something simple, sweet, straight to the point. It's a ghost hearse, man. Personally, uh, I like the concept, but honestly, it feels like you ran out of time. Yeah. But lucky for you, I'm not judging. Let's go to John. John, what do you think? The positive side, it's... Uh... That's great. I mean, I, I could see it being used for many things. Um, you did great on the capture of the, the coach itself and the ghostly look. And that's, uh, like I said, it's a good name. On the negative side, I mean, it's, that's, you can't really find anything negative about it. I mean, like I said, you found it, you, you, you hit it, you nailed it. I mean, it's pretty much what I expected from you. Uh, yeah, All right, what about you, Matt Savage? Know what I think about that. <laughs> I'm ready for it, coach. Well, sir, I think you did a great job. For real, I do. I mean, uh, just I like the concept you went with here. I like what you did uh, with the hearse itself. Um, and of course, you know, I personally know your type of style, and I knew I was going to get a little bit of that scuba belly humor in it too. 
The one negative thing I can think of, and this is by far the only negative thing, um, the whole One Foot in the Great Moving Company, I see what you did there, but I feel like you kind of diverted a little bit from like the Gotti's God, Oddities brand, just a little. But at the same time, besides that, it's, it's a good piece. What's your thoughts, Ryan? Uh, same. I think it's a great piece. I think the design is, is cool. Um, the One Foot in the Great Moving Company, I thought was pretty, pretty funny. Uh, but it was supposed to be a design for Gotti's Oddities, and I didn't see the, the, the branding of the of them um, or the name in there. And that was the only thing I didn't see as far as the logo goes. It, you know, you, you're kind of looking for that branding of the name. Um, so that was the only negative thing. But other than that, I, I think it's a great design. Thank you. Up next, Allie. Allie, tell us about your design. Uh, so I don't think I've ever drawn a car in my entire life. So uh, I wanted to go with uh, the kind of like a scoop boopy vibe color scheme, uh, which is like, you know, like the yellows and the purples and the pinks, uh, the kind of, you know, like a little bit of I guess. But um, uh, I wanted to put the name uh, in it and make it like the Fort Burn. But the idea was to put the, the hearse like color inside of the letters. And I kind of started the back end of it, but like, you know, it needed some touching up, you know, some fine line details and things like that, but other than like actually getting it finished. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, uh, I don't associate the 70s letters with Gotti's brand, but that's just my opinion. Uh, other than that, it is unfinished. Yeah, my bad dude. But it is probably one of the most creative ones here. John, what do you think? I knew exactly what you were doing when you brought out your uh, your pastels, and I was uh, eager to see what was going to come of it. I love everything about it. I'd love to see it finished. I think it'll pop even more, and I'd definitely like to use it. Your thoughts, Matt? I kind of figured that I'd be seeing something colorful and uh, even a little bit whimsical, if I could use that word. Yeah, use that word. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, uh, I feel like I've seen just that with this, and I feel like the challenge here was to make a logo over anything else, and in my opinion, yours looks more like a logo than anything else I'm seeing right here. The one negative thing I could say, you know, if I have to pick something. Um, obviously it's unfinished, but I mean, I get that sometimes great works of art take a little longer to do than you plan. What's up with it, Ryan? Creativity was, was amazing on that piece. Um, I mentioned before, you know, the, the branding was a big thing as far as the logo goes, and, and you nailed it with having the branding on there. Uh, so I think it's a great piece. I think it's very well put together. Uh, I'd be excited to see the finished product, so. Oh yeah, we'll see it. For sure. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you. Oscar Fernandez, step up. Tell us about your design. Um, well, um, whenever I create like a design logo, stuff like that, I want it to be recognizable, whether it's like one inch, gonna be on a shirt or you know, a postcard, or it's gonna be blowing up poster, t-shirt, things like that. Um, I don't draw cars very often, and I was just scrolling through the pictures, and like, I think the most dynamic one was just the front right there at the grill, and I was like, the hard parts you do this, you know, the symmetry, but you know, like just coming at you is kind of what I wanted. Uh, the whole oddity part, I wanted to bring in the bones and stuff like that, and have some radiance coming out of it, just to give it some movement. And instead of being like death, being you know, you know, like a dreary topic, just like radiant light, you know. So if it I had time, a little splash of color would have been nice. But yeah, just kind of movement as well. As going. Dude, I think this is one of the dopest ones. If it was a Cadillac logo competition but I can't tell that it's a hearse. What can we do? So, I think you missed the mark on that one, but like I said, I'm not judging. John, what do you think? It's all around, it's a great piece. You did a good job, thank you. Your thoughts, Matt? I was seeing inspirations of both the DeLorean from the Back of the Future mixed in there and the Hot Rod from ZZ Top's Eliminator album mixed in there too. And then you started adding the skull and I started getting a little overjoyed because it reminded me of uh, a typical movie poster you'd see for a horror or an exploitation movie from the 60s or 70s and those are among my favorite movies of all time. So I was, uh, I was screaming like a schoolgirl on the inside. Ryan. I, when I first seen it, I didn't really know the, the direction you were trying to go with it. Um, obviously, I knew you were doing the front of the car, but I kind of was not knowing where you were going yeah. with it. 
Um, so when I seen you start adding to the skull and stuff, I thought it was a great touch. Um, it'd be great for him to, you know, somewhere on there get get his branding on there and then use them as stickers. You know how many people put those on computers or in the back of their cars or something. Um, very cool design. It'd be really cool to see it in color and, and actually see it on t-shirts and, and clothing and stuff um, in the future. So, good job. Yeah. All right, the judges are going to deliberate and we'll bring you back in. Bye every night for you. Um, the one that seems to really jump out at you, get your attention more, and the one that has uh, so much uh, possibilities to use for even more than one thing, that's going to have to be Oscar. That's, that's actually my personal favorite. But uh, if we're talking about a logo to use, like I said before, um, the one that seems more like a logo would be Allie's. Matt Savage. All right, the verdict is in. The judges have decided. Stay tuned to find out after a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by MC Art Supplies. MC Art Supplies has a great selection of art supplies from oil, acrylic, watercolor, spray paints, brushes, pens, pencils, markers, canvas, and pottery tools, and much, much more. Visit us at 2025 Washington Avenue in Waco, Texas. This episode is brought to you by Central Texas Artist Collective. Central Texas Artist Collective exists to foster creative expression through the heart of Texas by unifying and growing arts and cultural programming, enhancing arts education and access for all. Visit us at centecartistcollective.org. All right, the verdict is in. The judges have decided. Ali Menchaca is the winner. It felt surprising uh, when the first person said, I vote for Ali, I was like, oh, really? <laughs> and they all said it, and it was a, a big surprise. Really. I had no idea that they were going to pick me, because there was a lot to choose from. There was a lot going on. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, the sketch winner, Ali, completely deserved it. Um, out of the three of us, hers was the most that looked like a logo and like had a clear thing of like what it was for, guys' audience, so like it's, it made total sense. Ali. What do you choose for the subject matter for the canvas painting? So I chose animals because I feel like that's one of the easier things to just kind of like throw together quickly and make it a good like dynamic piece. Ali has chosen animals. Your canvases have been set up. You have one hour to complete this painting. Your time kicks off now. But what animal are you going to paint? What are you going to do? There's so many animals out there. Do you make up one? Is dragon an animal? What about a hot dog? It's still considered an animal because I really wanted to draw a giant weenie and a couple of buns. So animals wasn't like the worst decision, so it gives a lot of freedom. What's an animal? What are the judges going to like? What am I going to be able to do? I mean, it's not every day you do this kind of stuff, so I mean, I don't. Do you? Do you? We're at the 30 minute mark. So far, it looks like they're doing okay. Uh, overall, so far, so good. I am not exactly sure what I'm going to do, but painting is my thing, and I can get it out pretty quickly. You're at 10 minutes left. Scuba Belly. Scuba Belly, he picked a chimp out of anything, which for me, monkeys are my favorite animals in the whole wide world. We're talking gorillas, primates, orangutans. I mean, I feel like I'm going to give this guy a high score just for, just for picking a chimp. It's like he went into my head and chose the perfect animal to impress me. So, he's definitely getting points with me there. One minute left. All right. 
right, guys. You've had one hour to complete your painting. Let's get to judging. Scuba Valley, you're up first. Tell me about your painting. Well, um, you know, the subject was animals, and I, the first thing I thought of was no monkeys. Well, we come from one, monkeys and whatnot. That was on today's right around the corner. So I figured, why not make a beautiful little Valentine's Day card for uh, one of our judges? Okay. The monkey's dope. The message is hella funny, obviously. Uh, your lettering looks a little sloppy and unfinished. Uh, other than that, pretty sick. What do you think, John? I love it. Uh, like I said, it's, it's an animal, it's a monkey, it's Valentine's Day, and oh, Matt, it just screams, oh, Matt. <laughs> the, mountain, the tongue to the side, and the eyeball in, and I just, I love it. I mean, there's nothing really negative to say about it. I mean, watching you do it was awesome. Matt, you gotta love this one, right? What do you think? Okay, well, I don't think you really got the memo because this was supposed to be uh, a painting of an animal and not a self-portrait. Oh! oh. <laughs> yeah. It's throwing shade. Yeah, well, better than throwing feces, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, but, but for real, I mean, before you added that last little touch to it, I was prepared to just give you a perfect score, just uh, give you an endless amount of love and respect for that because monkeys, primates, gorillas, chimpanzees, orangutans, those are my favorite animals in the whole wide world. I mean, I, I was going to say that you like went into my head and tried to come up with something that you think I would like, and then you added the last part. So, Oh, I think you thought you would like it. I'll well, go. I'll go <laughs> you know what? <laughs> uh, but anyways... Uh, I see what you were going for with this, and I do realize who I'm talking to whenever I'm looking at this and doing the ju judging thing right now. So, I mean, I kind of came in expecting something like this, and for sure I got it. Curious. <laughs> great work, dude. Curious, George. Take us out, Ryan. What do you think? Uh, great work. Man, uh, the realism is there. Um, it was crazy to sit back and see the details that you put into it and the amount of time that you had. So, overall, I think it was good. Um, and of course the humor thing. Uh, like I told them, I think if you have more time, the, the lettering, the, the hearts at the, the end and stuff, you could have cleaned it up. But I mean, you, that was all last minute just thrown on there. So um, I understand, but overall, man, a really nice job. Appreciate it. Up next, Ali Menchaca. Um, well, I started with Bird and I hated it, so I painted over it at the time. And, um, you know, I wanted to do some complimentary color stuff, make it look, you know, popping. So I used the orange and the blue. So, so um, I don't know. I like my paintings have like a little bit of emotion to them. Um, I don't like to worry about making it look too realistic, but I, I like the proportions to be there. I want it to be more or less of a, uh, an interpretation. I think the tiger could have used uh, some more black to make it really pop. Other than that, I think it's pretty beautiful. What do you think, John? It's, it's tough. This, this is one of my favorite types of art. Um, I will tell you, I got real nervous watching you. I, I felt your emotions, the wiping and the continuing layers and the uh, changing the ideas. It's, uh, I think, your 30 minute mark on it, I would say it was a done masterpiece, in my opinion, if I was painting it. And then just seeing that you had more time, I think you layered and textured and kind of lost that, that beginning feel of what you started. But painting's painting and I know the emotions that go into it and the change and I love abstract art, I love animals and the way you mixed it and just kept going with it. It, it still pops, it's still beautiful. I just, I think you had more to it 30 minutes in than finishing it, in my opinion. But it's still beautiful, I love it. What you got, Matt? All right, well, I think the only thing that's more impressive than what you did right here was the fact that you completely started over and did something else, like after after an original plan. I mean, just the fact that you started over and came up with that, that, uh, that speaks wonders to uh, the amount of talent that I think you have. Um, I really love what I'm seeing here and uh, you know I was watching you whenever you were doing this and you definitely took everything you had at your disposal and you took you used full advantage of it and you came up with something that looks remarkable um, whenever I look at this the first word that comes to mind no joke is majestic and if you really wanted to uh, get a majestic side of this animal then I think mission accomplished what do you think Ryan 
Uh, I, I agree. Um, about that 30 minute mark, 40 minute mark, I, I think that you, you had, I mean, you nailed it. You could have stopped right there and it would have looked, um, not that this doesn't look good because it's an amazing piece of work too, but it would have looked better um, if you would have stopped. And then I saw the frustration with the black uh, come out where you just started basically dabbing everywhere and just trying to, you know, make the lines that you were looking for. So I saw the frustration at the towards the end and then I kind of feel like that's where you lost the direction of what you were initially trying to aim for. But uh, overall, really good work. I really like it. Up next, Oscar Fernandez. Oscar, tell us about this painting. All right, well, uh, I'm not a real big realist sort of artist. I like my 2D, my cartoons, things like that. And uh, I was kind of stumped on what kind of ammo I wanted to do. And I was like, well, you know, this will probably just be hanging up in my son's room with all my other stuff. So he loves Megalodon, so I was like, hell, we'll do a Megalodon. And uh, yeah, just had a lot of fun with it. Though it's not uh, realistic in any way, I do like that you put texture. I like that you put lighting in it. Um, I like that you pulled it out of your head. Uh, no references. And uh, yeah, good job, man. Colors are vibrant. John, what do you think? Yeah, right on. Uh, that's what I was telling the panel earlier. It's it's the cartoonish aspect of it, and I love it. Everything about it, the, even the layers, it just pops. You know, I, you know, personally, I got down in an angle to take a picture so you can see the raised blood spots. It's that that right there screams cartoon animal layers, and you know, as you were saying, you put it in your son's room. That's exactly what I told myself. So it's like great in the son's room. It's it's a great piece. I love it. What's your thoughts, Matt? Well, let's see. Um, okay, little known fact about me, I actually dabbled into art whenever I was a little kid up until around the time I went to junior college. And uh, whenever I did my thing, I don't know what the heck just happened, but uh, <laughs> whenever whenever I did my thing, um, my style was always in the style of the cartoony 2D stuff, so that style always has always held a special place in my heart. So I mean, uh, I love what I'm seeing here. And one thing that was brought to my attention is that it seems to me that you didn't really have anything to go by. You just kind of went with your instinct and just kind of came up with something. And uh, for having nothing to go by except for your creative vision, I think that's incredible. And one thing that I personally can't unsee whenever I look at this. Not that this is a bad thing, yeah. it's, it's an interesting thing. For me, it looks like uh, he's enjoying himself some uh, tasty chewing gum, as if uh, <laughs> as, as if Jaws just uh, just uh, killed everybody on the beach and then just decided to keep his breath uh, minty fresh with chewing gum, which is great. Take us out, Ryan. What do you think? I think you nailed the design, man. Uh, uh, like he said, you know, I, I brought it up when we were talking before y'all came in, but I think you're the only person who didn't have a uh, picture to go off of. You went strictly out of your mind and what you knew and your that's completely your design um so the fact that you were able to do that and i think it turned out really good it paid off well for you the judges have decided the winner to go on to our final episode is come on you knew this was coming <laughs> stay tuned to find out word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Waco Rage Room. Pissed off? Angry? Or just want to have some fun? Don't break your stuff. Break ours. Our mission is demolition. Come visit us at 1007 Wooded Acres Drive, Waco, Texas. This episode is also brought to you by Hype Waco for all your urban and vintage clothing needs. Massive sneaker selection and accessories. New inventory frequently. The judges have decided the winner to go on to our final episode is Oscar Fernandez. Oscar, you will go on to compete for a cold hard cash prize, prize package from Waco Rage Room, art to be featured at Skellington Curiosity, and a chance to become king of the paintbrush social club. The winner? Hi. Uh, yeah, it was really, really unexpected. I want to thank all of our participants, our judges, our sponsors. It's fucking rigged, man. All this stuff is rigged. You hear me? Uh, why didn't I win? Why didn't I win, I said to myself. And I'll see you guys next week.
Uh, where am I looking? Do I look at the camera? Or do I look at you? Right down the barrel. Okay. 